one second, mate. Oh, okay. Am I talking into a camera or am I just talking to the senator? Just talk to the senator. All right. We talked on the phone, but great to meet you. My name is Michael Rinder. Nice to meet you. Bernie Sanders. Thank you. I'm professionally known as um, Killer Mike. Um, I rap, and I rap about a lot of the stuff that you ran about. And I want to talk about that. I'm a kid that grew up on the west side of Atlanta, not far from here. Working class community, I like money. I've always considered myself a capitalist. I've always tried to invent ways to make money. I remember stuff would fall off the back of a truck. We'd get it. <laughs> We'd come to school, sell it, whether it was toys, candy, or whatnot. And out of the stuff that I got, or when my grandpa and I would go fishing, we'd catch extra fish, or if one of the neighbors would grow at the time in my community, people still grew stuff, had chickens in the backyard, stuff like that. Um, you kill a chicken or get eggs, you, you take it and share it with other people. We still have chickens in the backyard in Burlington, Vermont. I definitely should take a visit. <laughs> <laughs> but I say that because although I considered myself a capitalist and I wanted to make money young, there was a certain compassion to it. There was a compassionate capitalism of sorts in which I understood I was a part of a bigger community. So the lady, Miss Ruby, whose yard I used to cut for $25, I cut her front and backyard. When she started paying me less, and I complained to my grandmother, and my grandmother explained to me that she didn't have the money she used to have. She didn't have the money she used to have because her Medicaid somehow got affected. But I stayed doing the job because I knew that her yard needed to be cut. It deserved to be cut. She deserved to have the dignity that she had always had. And then I started learning about, in high school, sentiments of other political systems besides capitalism, socialism, communism, um, what a despot is, you know. And socialism, although preached in a very scary way, boogeyman-like way, to citizens of this country now, is not foreign. You were born in 1941. Um, essentially, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was still president. The things that he was proposing at the time, like Social Security, things of that nature, were considered socialism taking us on the road to communism. And I think that's something very mean and damn near evil that said when, when you're talked about, because it doesn't represent what I think your real philosophy is, and people of my community, my ethnic community, haven't had an opportunity to hear you simply say, these are the things I think. So what is socialism, and what does it mean to the black community? All right. What it means to me, what it means to the black community, what it means to the American community, is the understanding that when we talk about rights, right? Yes. You have freedom of speech. You can go out on the street court and give a speech. Absolutely. You have the constitutional right to do that. Absolutely. But you know what? To be truly free, you need economic rights as well. Absolutely. All right, so you can go out and give a speech, but you don't have any food in your stomach, you don't have a house roof over your head, you don't have any education, are you really free? And I think that in the richest country in the history of the world, Mike, which is what we are right now, yeah. we can do infinitely better in providing economic rights to our people. So when I talk about democratic socialism, this is what I say. You have a right, regardless of your income, to health care. I believe that. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, you're old, young, black, white, you have a right to health care. You have a right to have an education. And I think in the year 2015, you have a right to have free tuition in public colleges and universities if you have the ability. I don't think if you're poor, you should be denied that education. Absolutely. All right? I think you have a right to have a decent job that pays you a living wage, and you can't make it on seven and a quarter an hour, which is why we have to raise the minimum wage, why we need pay equity for women workers. So what I am talking about when I talk about democratic socialism is to make sure that in the richest country in the history of the world, which is what we have right now, that everybody at least has a minimal standard of living and some dignity as a result of that. So at the end of the day, people want to get paid a fair wage. Exactly. Um, because people get paid a fair wage, people will get to have fair living conditions. Absolutely. Um, people will get to spend more time at home with their children, which gives children a bonus of confidence of, I should go to school and perform well, because now I have a parent that's in the household that can help me. Right, Mike, you're making a huge point, which we don't talk about all that often. When I was growing up, 400 years ago, <laughs> do you know that one person in those days, often the man, yeah. could work 40 hours a week Absolutely. and provide for the family? Absolutely. And today, what are you seeing all over America? You're seeing husbands and wives working incredibly long hours. Absolutely. Are they spending the time with the kids that they should be spending? No. They, they can't. Are, they can't. So the kids are hanging out in the street corners. Yep. Kids are getting into trouble. Absolutely. And on and on it goes. And again, in the richest country in the history of the world, 
We should not be having the highest level of childhood poverty of only almost any major country on earth. But, but I, I guess Senator Sanders, like, what, where are people not seeing the connect? Like, to me, all these things are interconnected. Um, I grew up organizing right down the street with a group of suburban kids, rowdy gang member kids, regular BNA student kids, C and D kids, right down the street, led by a woman named Alice Johnson from Chicago. And she introduced me to the tenements of social justice. Good. Right? I didn't know what social justice was. We all were just like, we out here trying to live. We, what is social justice? And my first lesson of social justice was she organized on the behalf of the Atlanta Fools Commission on Children and Youth with a woman named Jean Charles Young, Andrew Young's um, late wife. And she said, there's no way I'm going to organize on the behalf of kids and not have kids a part of that process, not have kids a part of that talk. So you seem to be the only candidate that is inclusive of ideas that you just didn't bring to the table, ideas of other people. Like, I'm literally here on a tweet. I'm here because I tweeted, I thought your ideas were progressive and I'd love to have a conversation with you. And the response is that you're here. That's a very different narrative than anyone running for a national office, especially U.S. president. You are different. Why? 